Hello and welcome to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You won't see me do this very often, steering assist on high. I only do that on Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Daytona Motor Speedway. It helps to smooth things out a little bit and I'll explain that more later. I'm going backwards because I want to delay the chaos a little bit. Once my front bumper passes the second sign there, I will be getting on the gas. Takes a while to kick in with this car and I'll get more into assists and steering sensitivity later. So what's going to happen here is I am going to run out of time on lap number one and then I'm going to coast for a while and catch a couple of bots and start going forwards again. This delays the chaos by about 20 kilometers or uh, five laps. I know some of you guys run miles per hour and I'll do a little bit of both in this race. I'm going to do first chunk of this race will be kilometers an hour and then I'll move over to miles per hour. Now in the description area you will find some timestamp links because this is a, a long race. I'm giving you the full version here. Here I am out of time. I'm going to start coasting. I'm going to go really tight on the inside here going under the white line. You can do that as long as you don't get into the dark gray. That'll be off track. Under the white line here is not off track, only if you get into the dark gray. And on this next corner here, I don't do it in this race, but let's see here. Right at this section, you could drive way under the white line if you want to and it's not off track. Only that dark gray is. Now there's no advantage to driving way under there. I'd have to slow down a lot, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so let's go back to the start. Why am I using steering assist high on this track? Well, there seems to be a tiny bit of traction control built into steering assist high. And it doesn't really hit the brakes on, but once in a while, if you're watching, you're gonna notice that I do lose a little bit of speed on the corners. So it seems to help me smooth that out a little bit. I haven't done this for a long time, and I got a couple of people asking me to try this again because a lot has changed. So see that? That's because I haven't done this for a long time and my movements were not correct, nor was my trajectory. Now I'll figure that out really quickly here. This race, boy, I tell you, this is a hard race. It's a really hard race, but honestly, one of the most fun races in the game. I just wish it paid better. So if you fully upgraded your car just to do this race, you're gonna be in for a letdown because this is about fun. It's not about earnings and yeah, I am fully upgraded here. If you're not fully upgraded, you're going to have a really hard time going as far as I do. I have gone 100 kilometers before I fully upgraded this car, but it's a lot harder and harder to keep it going. But you know what? Towards the end of this race, eh, you'll see it is possible. You don't have to fully upgrade to have fun, but it's a little more fun fully upgraded because of the speeds you can hit. Um, I also dropped my sensitivity to zero, and I'm sure you noticed that. I haven't mentioned that yet. So my standard setting is steering sensitivity two with no assists. When you put steering assist on, you need to drop your sensitivity by maybe as much as three points. Of course, I can't do more than two, so that's what I'm doing. But that's what I find. If you go from no steering assist to high, that steering assist is going to kind of increase your sensitivity so you need to back it down a little bit to have a similar feel now inversely if you are always driving with steering sensitivity on high and you want to go to no steering sensitivity I would recommend that you raise it by two or three just while you're making that adjustment when I first went to no assist driving I actually ran steering sensitivity on 10 isn't that a shocker my first 18 months of playing this game, my standard setup was steering assist high, brakes low, traction control on, tilt A, and sensitivity 7. Now, that caused a lot of trouble for me on a lot of tracks, and I just didn't realize it, and I also found it far too hard to drive without assist at that time. So as I made the transition, I needed to go up to steering sensitivity 10. Now that makes you, honestly makes you too twitchy in the corners to carry a lot of speed. So over time, and I'm talking about two years, I gradually dropped my sensitivity down to two. Now you could do that faster if you wanted to or if you need to. 
I didn't really know I needed to and I dropped it a little bit at a time and I got faster each time so you'll notice that a lot of the top racers are running sensitivity 0 to sensitivity 4 I don't see much different than that more often than not you'll find the top guys running 0 um, I can't do that for my standard setup my standard is 2 when my when I put steering sensitivity high I definitely go to 0 if I'm driving the McLaren MP4X, McLaren MP44, Ferrari F14T, and a few others, I run sensitivity zero. The 2019 F1 cars, I can run steering sensitivity two and be quite happy. Boy, I had to get out of the gas there, or I was gonna wreck. Still dealing with these slow bots. Okay, back to what I was talking about there. So my standard sensitivity is two. However, there's a few Aston Martins that I actually need to run one. And it just feels more comfortable for me. If I run two in those Aston Martins, I just step out too easy, I slide too easy. Zero isn't enough input, one is perfect for me. A lot of it is individual setup. Okay, so let's see here. I've covered why I'm using steering assist high and sensitivity. If I use no steering assist at all here, I cannot carry this much speed. I just can't do it. Maybe some other people can. I can't. So, like, look at that. 341. You're not going to see a higher speed than that on the straight. Once in a while. Oh, look, it just happened. 342. That's as high as you can get. That's as fast as you can go. And check that out. That was an awesome pass. Now, can I carry it through here? No, I lost traction. Still, not too bad. I had to get out of the gas there. There's a tiny bit of traction control built into steering assist high. Not very much. So you can't just set things on high and expect it to save you. It will not do that. Now, you might be noticing this. You've got to get ridiculously low in the corners and high on the exits. You've got to get comfortable with the walls and comfortable with the bots. That only happens after experience. Do not expect to go try this race one time and pull this off. Did you see that? My trajectory was to smash into him, and then as I was exiting the corner, I passed him. That's only from experience. That's because I know that at this point of the race, that's exactly how he's going to be driving. So I'm not reaching maximum difficult bots yet, but they're right around the corner. See the pack? There we go, baby. That's what we've been looking for. That is maximum difficult bots, and already they're getting tangled up. I had to really get out of it. Now watch this. Isn't this wild? Three wide at Indy, four wide at Indy. If you know Indianapolis Speedway, you know that's a horrible, horrible idea. Okay, so like I said, I've had a few people asking me to rerun this because things have really changed since I did my first 100 miles at Indy race. Again, I'm running kilometers per hour right now, but I'll switch over later. So what's changed? Well, in my original video, I said that if you bash into the bots a little bit, they'll nail the brakes and then it's easier to pass them. That was true back then. That is not true anymore. You saw what just happened there? That's one of the new problems we have to face. But what about this? This is one of the new benefits. Okay, so in the old bot programming, if I had a guy next to me on the straight, and I started bashing him into him a little bit, not too hard, just a bit, he'd slam on the brakes and I could pass him and that would be the end of it. Watch what these guys do. I really hate this, um, but it's the way things are right now. Currently, when you pass a bot in an endurance race, he gets nitro. For five seconds, he flicks the nitro and he can pass you. He can go faster than you can go in a fully upgraded car. Quite a bit faster, as you'll see sometimes. There's going to be times where I'm passing bots at 340 kilometers an hour and suddenly they zip away on me. Now, as you can see, once in a while, I just don't get the trajectory correct. Um, that much contact into walls you can afford. You can't afford really big hits. Oh, watch this. You got to be really careful. That was ridiculously close. Wow. Now, you can't take on serious damage. The second your windshield is cracked in this race, you've got a big disadvantage. There's several levels of damage. So with this race, you'll see that normally I can max out at 340 kilometers an hour. Often you're going to see 339. If you stay full throttle for 
about one or two full laps, you'll see a 340. Now, if you get extremely minor damage, an extremely small crack, your top speed's gonna go down to 336, 337. Then that'll drop to about 332, and then it drops even further. And you don't always see all those four levels, but that's what I found at this track and this car. You can get away with some of that, but not much. Ah, look at that, isn't that beautiful? That's one of the new benefits. He gave me the lane. So this is the catch-22 to doing an outside pass. If I do an outside pass at the midpoint of a corner, I'm going to be in trouble. Like right here? Yeah, look at that. I, I, I'm going to have to get out of the gas. So because these guys hit the nitro, an inside pass, sorry, an outside pass is a disadvantage to me. However... In general, the outside pass is better because I carry more speed. So I've had some people say, ooh, look at that guy into the wall nicely. Gotta watch. You really gotta watch all the time here. I've had some people saying, why don't you just brake when you're going into the corner and then accelerate out of the corner? That is correct almost all the time. Not in this car and at this track because the acceleration rate of this car is really not very good. So if I brake and then get back into th the throttle exiting the corner, I'm not gonna be hitting 340 till closer to the end of the straightaway. Whereas once I really find my rhythm, I'm often at 340 very shortly after the exit of the corner. So if at all possible, you wanna stay full throttle, but you watch, do you see that? I get way up to the wall as I'm entering the corner, up to the wall as I'm exiting the corner, and then thread the needle, so now he's gonna hit nitro, isn't that amazing? I don't know, I don't know if that's ever gonna get corrected. Wow, that's interesting. And then, woohoo, that was close. I hope I didn't hit him. That was so incredibly close. Now I'm gonna dip down really low because I really got out of the throttle there and they just drive off. You might think this looks really easy. My goodness, this is not easy. Watching, watching, are they gonna come down? Are they gonna stay high? What's gonna happen? Oh, you gotta watch, because look at that. Radical change of race line for that guy. And then hit the nitro. There's no reason for that to be happening. If you watch my old videos, you know that that never happened in the past in the old bot programming. I have brought this to the attention of EA several times, no change yet. I know they got a lot on their plate right now. There's some, maybe some more serious things to deal with. So, okay, you see you seeing this traffic? So this both excites me and worries me, but this never happened with the old bot programming. I mean, look at those guys. They're heading in four, is that five wide? No, that was four wide, but that's crazy. You just know that can't work. So I'm gonna just nick these guys. Ooh, he hit the wall there. That's very unusual. Beautiful. I was checking for cracks because I did have a bit of contact. Whether I have cracks or not, I'm going to keep going. But if I've got cracks, i got to be aware of that because it, it could affect how I drive into the corners uh, and how hard I can push it. I can actually drive a little bit more aggressive when I have a bit of a cracked windshield, but I also have to. Again, nitro, baby. Kind of drives me crazy, baby. Anyhow, lap 19. So again, now that I got the trajectory dialed, you see I just lost one kilometer an hour, back to, up to 340, 341, exit at 340, down to 339, back to 340. Are you seeing the advantage of staying full throttle? I mean, it's pretty impressive once you get everything correct. So you gotta really maximize your trajectory. Now this is gonna be a problem because I didn't get up high enough, so down to 325, oh boy. You know, I've learned you can trust these bots an awful lot. It's extremely rare that they will pit me as long as I'm minding my lines. However, once in a while, if you're doing an outside pass, just between the entrance and midpoint of the corner, sometimes they're gonna smack you so hard at this track, they'll do the full pit maneuver on you and you just gotta be ready for it. Okay, I can't get to the outside, I'll swing to the inside. I will not drive in front of him because he's going to hit nitro. And there's a chance that he could have done the pit maneuver on me if I was trying to get in front of him right as he's hitting nitro. 
Now, you know they're not actually hitting nitro. Whoa, that was close. You know they're not actually hitting nitro, but I don't know. It's new to the game. What, how else do I explain it? You know, in racing, that, that's a real thing. I mean, how else can you be neck and neck, neck to neck with your competitor and you're equally matched and you know you're equally matched and suddenly he's pulling away? Nitro. Or in some other cars, you know, there's other advantages in some F1 and Formula E cars. Well, this is neither. This is Godzilla. This is the classic Godzilla. Gotta love the Godzilla. I love the top speed of this car. I mean, 340 kilometers per hour in a car for the Pro Series. I mean, come on, man, that's pretty awesome. And the grip level of this car is awesome. It's a perfect combination for this track. I mean, it's absolutely perfect because if you do everything correct, you stay full throttle and that's just awesome. That's why this is one of my favorite races even though it pays horrible. My old favorite race was the McLaren P1 GTR at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but when that series got reworked, you could no longer do it this way. If you drive this way, even if you drive flat out right from the start, you'll just never get to the perpetual point. This is now the only track where you could reach the perpetual point without ever going off track once. Well, you know what? I gotta take that back. Um, Porsche short track and the McLaren MP4X. If you got mad skills, you could pull that off without ever going off track and you could possibly do it in the McLaren 720S GT3. I very recently did a video on that one where I hardly went off track at all and I still reached the perpetual point. I'm gonna throw up a link to that video um, I'll also throw it at the end here because that was pretty impressive and it also paid pretty good. That's for M dollars. Now look at this melee of madness. I mean, there's a lot of carnage here. Look at that. Let's thread the needle. Can I get in front? Oh, yes, I can. Awesome. I can block him a bit. And then you got to keep watching. Craziness. Outside here. Look at all this carnage. Nowhere else in the game can you see this. There's nowhere else in the game, not even NASCAR. Um, lots of people ask me about NASCAR. I still have access to all NASCAR races because I was playing the game back when they were first introduced, so I have all access. That includes races where there are 43 cars on the track. Even there, you don't see this kind of craziness. You do on the first one or two laps at Daytona Motor Speedway, or even Indian, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but they just don't drive like this. I mean, these guys, they're all over the track, like four wide, five wide. You can't get this anywhere else in the game. That's why I love this race. It's just an awesome race and it's really challenging. Now, getting back to NASCAR, uh, Sean announced a while ago that there's going to be a NASCAR update at some point. I am really excited to see that. I've missed the NASCAR content. Some people don't like it, but if you're watching this race, you probably don't mind just turning left. By the way, if you're watching this race and you've tried it, you know that just turning left can be incredibly hard. If you think this is easy, give it a shot. This is really hard. Just doing what I'm doing now without all these cars in the way, this is really hard. I've had some guys try this and they said, man, it's really hard to get to the end of lap 25. Look at this. I mean, come on, when have you seen this kind of madness? I tell you. Now, if you go full throttle right from the start, like don't go backwards like I did. Now, I just got to take a picture of this. Like, look at that. That's just crazy. And then we'll get back to racing. Got to be careful when you pause the game. If you pause it in the wrong moments, holy smokes, you can mess yourself up. So I've had people that have said it's just incredibly hard to even keep this car going straight at this track without all this carnage around you. So a lot of this is anticipation. I've been here before. I kind of know what to expect, but not always. So I got to watch what's going on right around me. And yeah, I want this guy. I'm going to box him in on purpose. He's not going to hit me, but that guy will. Now I got to look forward and watch ahead the track ahead ahead of the track here and then watch my race line and boy you got to stay attentive you might have noticed there i've now gone over 100 kilometers see as you can tell i'm obviously not at four kilometers so let's switch over to miles per hour there we go so that gives me 65 miles so you can actually at least see that i'm i got a ways to go yet 
my bumper blocks the the odometer reading there now that was a bit of risky contact I wanted the lane and I was pretty sure he'd give it to me they will almost always give you the lane even if you're not right beside them if you are reasonably going to be beside them they'll give you the lane and I love that they put that programming into this game what I don't like is once in a while they get confused so when I'm doing that outside pass at in between the entrance and the middle of the corner that's when they seem to treat me like I'm doing an inside pass and instead of giving me the lane like it's like they think I'm on the inside so they move over it's it's kind of bizarre I, I honestly think it has more to do with this new nitro effect now that guy that I just shoved to the outside he has to get out of the gas there's no way he's gonna be a problem it's these guys oh my goodness low boy no 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 I'm not doing this there's no way that's gonna work <laughs> you see that sometimes I hate getting out of the throttle I hate it hate it hate it but sometimes you just have to do it or you're gonna be you're gonna be toasted oats so I will fight to get this to 100 miles uh, I just want you guys to see that this is still possible another problem with my original video is that I was using a different screen recorder I was on a different phone so this one is true high definition I'm recording this in uh, 1080 60 frames per second and uh, 12 mbps so pretty good quality you should be able to see the little specks in the asphalt down there much better quality than my older video however that older video was interesting but it just doesn't apply anymore because the bot behavior is so different and you just like in the old days that guy would have slammed on the brakes not now so once you pass the guy you have to be aware of him for another five seconds all right so here we are I'm not as used to miles per hour so what's my max I think I'm gonna max out a 211 I just gotta pay attention to that for a while I almost never run miles per hour to 10 I don't think we'll see 211 here but I'm pretty sure I can hit 211 let's see what happens on the end there we go 211 so it's possible I could hit 211 if I have a, a nice exit I should get a nice exit here let's see I'll lose it for a bit do I get it back there we go ah, it's possible I could hit 212 heading into the inside line if I have just the right line I will not have it here I'm gonna have to set up an outside pass he gives me the lane set up the inside pass oh I gotta get out of the gas nuts he got in he got under me there on that uh well I don't know I was threading the needle that's what that would be I was doing both an inside and an outside pass at the same time threading the needle at corners of Indianapolis Speedway is borderline crazy uh, Daytona Motor Speedway or Talladega okay you can do that you got you can run that way for quite a while not at Indy you, you just don't do that so if you enjoy Indianapolis Motor Speedway racing this is it this is just where you get it so this is for the thrill of the race gotta talk like a cool sports announcer and maybe talk about buying trucks during the commercials because this is how you talk if you're gonna sell a truck however it's gonna make me cough if I keep talking like that so switch back to my regular voice so you'll notice I'm pretty comfortable with these walls drive up pretty high oh a little bit too high boy that happens to me far too often I did the same thing in the Formula E Berlin event just yesterday where I was just saying how I was comfortable with a breaking point and then I hit the wall anyway as you guys can tell in general I'm pretty comfortable I get up pretty high and get down pretty low in the corners obviously you don't have to get right down to the white line every single time but as you've probably noticed if there's a car in the way you have to get ridiculously close to hitting him and then with the newer programming they get out of your way so this race does require a totally different approach I'll take that back not totally different but quite different so here I'm taking an inside pass I have to get out of the gas get back into it here I gotta go under ah uh, yeah I did lift for a bit there it's not worth taking on damage because once you get damaged you're really hindered in going forward 
Now this is not good. I definitely have to get out of the gas. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Even there, I was really risking getting hit. I want to stay full throttle. Okay, that worked pretty good. Now you might be asking me, why don't I just hit the brakes and take it easy? Because there's all these cars in front of me. Because if I hit the brakes and take it easy, these will be the last cars I see. Whoa, nuts, I went off track a bit. Oh my, did I ever lose a lot of momentum. Now I had to readjust my handling a little bit there. Once in a while, I just gotta readjust my fingers and sometimes I choose a really bad point to do that. That one was okay, but you really shouldn't do that at the middle of a corner because odds are you're not gonna come out of this very good. Okay, where well, there's smoke, there's fire. So let's see how this goes. Again, I don't wanna get out of, the, out of the throttle unless I have to, oh nuts. Off track again and again as I try to save it. Oh man, I lost 50 miles an hour. That's a huge amount of speed. So you're gonna see that it takes me quite a while to build that up again. So here we are. Boy, it's probably gonna take me at least three quarters of a lap to get myself back up to uh, 210. Big hit when you do that. Uh, let's see, another question I get a lot. Why don't you take it easier? Oh, the other question I get a lot. More and more I'm getting this one lately. Why don't, why do you keep passing people when your timer's full? You should just slow down because then you'd be able to go further. No, that doesn't work when you're doing this type of racing. Whoa, nuts! Oh, I couldn't anticipate that and I got cracks. Oh boy. I still think I can hit 100 miles, but boy, I got to buckle down now. It's going to be harder to get the overtakes. I definitely take, took a hit right there. I don't know if I have stage one or two damage. I don't know how big of a hit this is. It's so hard to anticipate the accidents and that's what makes this race fun and challenging. Let's do the slow motion replay. The one car is wrecking and I think I can get under him. Yeah. But I did not anticipate that the white car was gonna nail the brakes. And yes, that was my slow motion reaction. Okay, what was I in the middle of saying? Yes, I was in the middle of saying that you have to keep passing cars. You got to ignore your timer. Uh, so that's why, yeah, people tell me that I should be slowing down and only pass when my timer is at 80 or below. And that is generally true. I say the exact same thing for standard endurance races where I'm using the clock management technique. However, this is endless endurance racing technique, which means go for it, hammer down, keep passing. Don't worry about the clock because if you slow down, you will lose these bots. You will not, well, first off, if you don't drive the way I did, you'll never see this. It just won't happen. Okay, I gotta readjust again. Ah, this is the wrong place. And you see what happens? I'm losing it. But I felt like I was gonna drop my phone, so I was gonna lose it either way. That timer is getting scary low. If I don't pass any cars at all, you, I need about 50 seconds to do a complete lap, so I'm getting very nervous. I've got all sorts of cars in front of me, but that doesn't matter if I can't catch up to them. Now, that's pretty good, 206, 207. I don't expect to see any higher than that with the damage I have. So I would say I've gotten minor damage. 208, all right. Yep, definitely this is stage one damage. Come on, I have to pass someone this lap or I'm done. Okay, I got one. Now, if I fight too hard just to pass one, I also will not finish this lap. I had to pass one and stay full throttle with maximum speed. Uh, timer's getting low. Now I'm gonna have to get out again. Ah, can I stay in? Nope, gotta get out. He'll give it to me, but it won't matter. I'm not gonna overtake him. So he's gonna suddenly swipe in front of me. I don't have to worry about that. The, uh, the bots are doing really good with their lane management, so I'm not gonna get out of the throttle just because he's cutting across my nose. But I need another two cars. And this is not a good way to pass. Come on, come on, let's go, go, go. Good, this guy's a little bit slow. Boy, this is making me nervous. Hey, I just hit 99 miles. I'm gonna hit that 100 miles, oh good. There we go. So I've done this a lot and it's still really hard for me. A big problem with this race is driver fatigue. 
after a while oh boy after a while it's just it's hard to pay total attention all the time you know what I thought I hit that wall I didn't oh I was wrong I've got stage 2 damage I think yeah, I wouldn't be hitting 336. Wow, I'm surprised I'm doing as good as I am. Okay, now obviously I'm not at 62 kilometers. I'm at 160, okay, 163. And you can see that when I switch views once in a while. You can see that I, I'm definitely doing better than it looks. Now the downside of having to be this hyper aggressive is that I'm probably gonna take some more damage here. Wow, that was kind of funny. And I'm really stuck in a bad lane. Whoa, carnage all around me. Oh my goodness. Come on, I'm trying to make a little bit of room here. Getting a little bit aggressive. Now I have gone further than this, trying to recall my maximum distance. I got it, it was 241.2 kilometers or 149.9 miles. And yes, that really frustrated me that I didn't hit 150 miles. However, I've never seen anyone go further. Not to say that no one ever has, I'm sure. It's gotta be someone who has, but boy, it's not easy. Oh my goodness, let's thread that needle at this speed and drift the corner. Oh my goodness, is he gonna, oh, come on. See what I mean about the nitro ghosts? Man, those nitro ghosts drive me crazy. I'm still looking at a pretty decent timer though. Look at that, almost filled it at lap 43. Pretty amazing. So as you can see, it is possible to go forever at this track if you got the skills and if you can fight the fatigue. However, you're going to see at the end, this is not a good farming race. It's just, that's just not why you do this. So let's look at the cost of getting this car and having enough to enter this event. You're going to need to enter Group A Grand Tour in the Pro Series. And this is the only car in that series and I'm showing you the upgrades you need to finish that, which is too short of being fully upgraded. So fully upgrading this car is of no benefit anywhere really. You don't have to do it, but it does make this race a lot more fun. Now let's look at some other options like the Audi R8 LMS Ultra and Porsche 918 RSR Concept. It's cheaper to fully upgrade both of those cars. They are in more series and they have endless endurance races that are easier and pay a lot better. They're not as much fun, but that's a wiser way of spending your money if you're low on currency and you really want something that you can use on bonus fame and bonus R dollar days. And I'm gonna put those races, they're in a playlist that I will put at the end of this video. There's also crazy races like uh, MP4X at Le Mans. I guess I haven't said this yet, the way you get really, really crazy bunched up traffic where there's accidents is by running really fast lap times. The faster you run, the crazier they get, the closer they get. So that does mean that if you slow down a little bit, they're going to bunch out a little bit more and you have an easier chance going as long as you want to. But I like the craziness. I'm not doing this for currency. I'm doing this for fun. I want the craziness. I want the melee. I want the carnage. And, you know, I'm at uh, 181 kilometers. I mean, this is... I think this might be the second best I've ever done. And that's saying something because I haven't done this race in a long time. I, I wasn't sure if maybe things had changed since I last ran it. I did run it like this. Um, a while back, I did a video that I titled the 25 lap challenge, which was to make it to the end of the 25th lap. Very hard to do. And that one was a highlights video. This is the full thing. I wanted to show you from beginning to end how the whole thing works. At this point, I've obviously taken on a little bit more damage, as you can tell, because my top speed has fallen off more. I'm maxing out at about 330. And ah, uh, almost out of time, so 22 seconds. I'd have to pass three more cars to make it to the next lap. And unless there's a massive incident in front of me, that will not happen. So that's the problem. Um, and sometimes you want the carnage. Like, look how close I'm getting to this guy. I would pit him if I could, but I can't. 
As soon as my timer runs out, I'm gonna jump this up to four times regular speed as I run down the clock here. I'd love to hit 190, but it will not happen. All right, well, there you go. Lots of tips in that video on how to do this and in, in racing in general at Indianapolis, Speedway that is, several different t tips. Clean race bonus is kind of hilarious here. The pay is horrible, but I mean, it's a pro series race. I, I'm not expecting anything else. Here's some links to other videos you might find interesting. Thank you for joining me and happy racing.